Apple never seems to give a lot of love to the iPad mini. It was last properly redesigned three years ago in 2021, but this time around, we still haven't got OLED, we still haven't got promotion. And on the face of it, not an awful lot has changed. Well, my brand new iPad mini A17 Pro, yes, that is the actual name of it, according to Apple, arrived today. So we're going to have a look at it, give you my first impressions, and just run you through what this iPad is actually like to use and where the meaningful improvements have come. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, well, my name's David, and you'll find me here every week making videos about the Apple gear that I use every single day. Now, a good place to start is probably how it feels in the hand. If you didn't have an iPad mini 6 and you're wondering what this device is like and say you just upgraded to an iPhone 16 Plus or Pro Max, well, rounding up slightly, the display on these larger iPhones is about 7 inches and on the iPad mini is about 8 inches. And the iPad mini is around about 50 grams heavy. It weighs in it just under 300 grams. Talking about the displays for just a moment longer, the display on here is exactly the same display that was on the iPad mini 6. It's still that same backlit liquid retina LCD fully laminated display and still only 500 nits of brightness. And that's that's a little bit stingy. Out in daylight, broad sunshine, 500 nits of brightness, say compared to the iPhones, which have 1,000 nits of brightness, could pose a problem. And this is certainly a kind of device that you're going to be using quite a lot away from home and out on the fly. Now, an area that Apple is taking a lot of heat on at the moment, I think fairly so, considering this isn't a cheap device, it's still 500 pounds in the basic specs that I've got here, is the fact it's still only a 60 hertz refresh rate display. They seem resolute against putting in anything other than 60 hertz displays in their more budget consumer devices. I don't know why, sometimes Apple just seem to shoot themselves in the foot. Surely putting a 90 hertz panel in here wouldn't have been the end of the world, but they haven't. So when I asked you guys about what you wanted me to look at in this video, one of the questions that came up was about jelly scrolling. Have they managed to sort out those issues of jelly scrolling? I haven't got one of the iPad mini 6s to compare it to, but side by side with the 16 Pro Max, the first thing you notice is that 120 hertz refreshes an awful lot quicker and sharper than the 60 hertz, which is what you'd expect. But as for the jelly scrolling itself, which I'm sure you're aware when it's in portrait mode is where one half of the screen refreshes quicker than the other, that I didn't really notice. It's just much, much slower in refreshing and scrolling. But I seem to think they fixed the jelly scrolling with a software update sometime last year. We can only assume that there's eight gigs of RAM in here. Apple have told us eight gigs of RAM is the base that they need to run Apple Intelligence, and this iPad is Apple Intelligence ready. We'll be talking about that a little bit more, but we don't know, of course, because Apple always keep the cards close to their chest and what RAM is actually in their devices, but we must assume it's at least eight gigs in here. Entry-level storage is up from the measly 64 gigs that it was before. It now starts at 128, which is what I've got here. You can still spec it in 256 and 512 gigs of storage as well. Transfer speeds, I'll cover this in a little bit more detail later on, but transfer speeds are up from five gigabits per second on the iPad mini 6 to 10 gigabits per second on this device and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is quick as well. So I mean, all over, it's just a bit better all around. All those little kind of quality of life issues are just improved on this iPad mini. The cellular models, by the way, are now eSIM only worldwide and you don't get a charger brick in any iPads anywhere now. All you get is this braided USB-C charging cable. This new iPad supports the Pencil Pro that I bought for my iPad Pro earlier this year and it also supports Hover as well. Going along with what I just said, all these small little quality of life improvements, they've just tinkered and refined to make this iPad that little bit better. It's iterated just a little bit further from the previous version. One of the nice things about the fact they've included use of the Pencil Pro on this iPad mini is that the selection of pencils on Apple's website is now down to just two columns. It's much simpler, and much easier to choose which pencil you want to buy and to use. You know, sometimes I just don't understand Apple. They, they work in mysterious ways. For instance, on the iPad mini that I've got here, it's got True Tone Flash. But on the iPad Air, which is basically a poor man's iPad Pro, that hasn't got it. I don't understand. Sometimes they do the weirdest things. The cameras are pretty much the same. They're still 12 megapixel front and back. You've got an f1.8 camera on the back and an f2.4 camera on the front. But there has been a small, a very small minor software bump on the cameras. They now run HDR4, which is supposed to give you more detailed and vivid pictures, but never, never be that person that is out in the real world taking pictures on an iPad. It's an unforgiving thing to do. But in theory, the cameras are that little bit better. The camera, though, should have been moved onto the long edge like it is on my iPad Pro, but they didn't do it. That's something Apple should have done. And again, it's one of these mysterious moves. Why they chose not to do that, it would have just made using this device for video calls that much more comfortable. And let's face it, this is the kind of device that is going to be used by the family for video calls and FaceTime calls. Sadly, though, 
It's still off to one side, but you have got center stage. Not I'm a massive fan of center stage, but you have got center stage on this new iPad mini as well. Multitasking, it's always a thing when you talk about iPads. There is no stage manager on the iPad mini, understandably so. The display is just too small. I don't use it on the iPad Pro, but what I do use on the iPad Pro is split view and slide over, and you've got both of those features on the iPad mini. So if you wanted to do some gentle, lightweight work, it means you can have a spreadsheet or a web page open to one side, notes to the other. You can actually do some multitasking on this iPad mini, which makes it into a reasonable sort of crossover from pure content consumption device to a light working device as well. By the way, I said I put up a poll and a couple of messages on the community page. I tried to be fairly active on the community page and I said I wasn't going to buy this iPad mini initially. The poll said buy the Mac mini, which I still will be buying, but it's an expensive time of year for me. And if you're enjoying these videos, Honestly, just subbing makes a massive difference. More than you can know, sub, share, and turn on notifications to make sure you know when I upload the next video. And as I said, I will, assuming we're gonna get an, a Mac Mini, I will be buying a Mac Mini to review on the channel as well. With the release of this new iPad Mini, Apple can now claim that all of their new devices are Apple Intelligence ready, whatever that means. But apart from the very base level entry iPad, I think the watches and HomePods, HomePods needs looking at, by the way, Obviously, you can only speak to those devices, and I don't think they are Apple Intelligence ready yet. And I think, don't they run the CPU from Apple Watches anyway? So maybe they're going to sort that out all in one. But basically, all new Macs, all new iPads, and all new iPhones, even the iPhone SE that's due to come out next spring, are all now Apple Intelligence ready, if that's something that really floats your boat. Now, the chip choice was, was a, a weird call, for sure. You're probably aware by now that they're using the chip from the i15 Pro from last year, a bin down version of that. It's got one less GPU core down from six to five GPU cores on this iPad mini. Possibly, possibly in production of the iPhone 15 Pros, there was a whole load of damaged chips and they decided to put them to one side. And we know that Apple always plan a long way into the future. Maybe they always decided to use those bin chips in the refresh for this iPad mini. Maybe there's a whole bank of them stocked up somewhere in the world and once they're over, that's it. There's, it this could be the last of the iPads. I don't necessarily think it's on a three year cycle. And um, maybe that's what Apple always had in mind when they were looking to make a refresh of the iPad mini this year. I'm guessing there's two reasons that we didn't get an M series chip in here. And that's because it's a consumer device. They wanted to hit a certain price point, which they've done. And also thermals being that much smaller. Maybe the M series chips just didn't suit the architecture of the iPad minis that we've got now. But then you could argue, well, why didn't they use the A18 chip, the current chip? Well, it comes back to that data transfer speed. They've used the A17 Pro in this iPad mini. If they'd used the basic A18 chip, the transfer speeds would have actually gone backwards. If you look at the transfer speeds on the iPhone 16 and 16 Plus, you'll notice they're 480 gigabits per second transfer speeds rather than the 10 gigabits that we've now got on this iPad mini. I don't think Apple wanted to see to be seen to be going backwards from five gigs to 480. So that's probably one very good reason why they decided to use this chip this year. Now, the, the three nanometer architecture was very short lived. We all knew that it wasn't working particularly well. And that's why the, the move on from three nanometer to four nanometer and to M4 and A18 in virtually every device has been so quick. So we are Apple intelligence ready, but what does that really mean? If you look at their website, and I looked at it over the weekend when I was ordering the iPad mini and they claim about it being Apple intelligence ready. In all honesty, it doesn't mean that much right now. Their website's as clear as mud. It tells you about all the language restrictions and got something coming out in October. But all we're really expecting to see in October are the writing tools, photo cleanup, and the summary tools. All of the exciting stuff, the chat GPT and the clever Siri, visual lookup, Genmoji, all of that is going to be sometime next year. And we're hearing that it could be as late as summer of next year. And also the intelligent Siri, according to Mark Gurman's recent newsletter, is running into problems anyway. Apple aren't happy with its performance. It's still 25, 30% slower than ChatGPT. So there are still problems with that. So don't be going out buying this iPad mini on the theory and thoughts you're getting Apple intelligence. You're not. You'll get some in a month's time. So who is this iPad Mini 4. Well, it's perfect as a family computer, as a family iPad, something that everybody can use. It's great as a first time device, maybe something for your parents, for the grandparents, and of course, for the kids as well. That's who this iPad mini is perfectly suited at. Speaking of children, I've just got a few areas to cover on that right now. I had a viewer get in touch who's wanting to buy one of these iPad minis to use for his children, and he wants advice on some of the best 
apps for kids out there. So if you know of some apps that your kids absolutely love using on an iPad mini, let me know in the comments. It would really help us all out to learn. And also gaming, understand that it's a great gaming device. If you put a control on it, people are saying it's just the perfect size to game on. So as you'll well know, I'm no gamer, but if you have been gaming on an iPad mini 6, just let us know what that experience is like. And again, let us know in the comments, share, get this community going, what games it is you're actually playing. Carrying on on the theme of kids, I had another viewer asking about parental control and how easy it is to set up parental control. Now, clearly, this isn't something that affects me anymore, but it seems that Apple has made it pretty simple. If you go to settings, screen time, family, and then find your child's name, you can turn on content and privacy restrictions there. And when you set up screen time on your child's device, you can also set age-related restrictions for content purchases and downloads. And of course, don't forget, you can also set up specific parental controls on your kid's device too. So I hope that's helped you out a little bit if you're using one of these iPads for your kids or as a family device. So that's all well and good. We've looked at what we've got new on this iPad. We've looked at the specs. We've looked at what it's like to use. We've stepped outside of it briefly and seen what the, the display is like. But I've got a question for you. Rather than this kind of watered down price driven iPad mini that we've been given, if Apple had bought out an iPad mini pro, would that have interested you? Say it had smaller bezels, say it had a faster refresh rate, say it had even quicker data transfer, say it was just a small slim down version of the iPad Pro that I've got in front of me at the moment, would that have interested you? A lot of people seem to be saying that's the iPad they want, but I don't know if that's the iPad mini stepping outside of what it should always have been. And also, as we're talking about iPads, this is a video showing how a Mac user like me moved away from using purely a Mac to enjoying life with an iPad.